Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime Answers. Uh, this is where we take your questions you leave down in the comments below or on our Discord server and answer them, whether they be about video games. I mean, they can get personal if you want, although I probably won't answer most of those questions. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a fun little Q&A series we do where you don't have to show up to live streams or anything to ask me questions. Uh, just leave your question down below. And uh, who knows, it might even be the headline question for the video. Uh, we're going to actually address part of the issue with this uh, video content here before I get into the questions because first off, i got to remind you we are giving away two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League to enter to win. Just head down to the pinned comment or the description. But setting that aside, uh, some people are under the impression when they watch this video that it's clickbait. I, I find it quite interesting. Uh, we, we've had this debate before. Clickbait isn't actually the raw definition of clickbait. is isn't a negative. Uh, it, it's got a negative connotation added to it by people over time uh, based on bait and switching, but that's not exactly what clickbait is. Clickbait is just making something title or thumbnail-wise that makes you want to click. That's actually the whole point of making video content. We make video content because we want people to watch. We, one way to get people to watch is to get people to click. So that's not really necessarily a bad thing, but people feel like when they watch these prime answers that they're expecting something that they're not. These are Q and A's. They're discussion videos. They are not intended to be anything other than that. So if you come into these videos expecting to hear news, that's not what these videos are about. Okay. I make this very clear by one, we put prime answers in the damn title. Uh, and two, we try to formulate the entire, uh, headline as a question. So yeah, these are just questions that fans had. I timestamp everything. The headline question can literally be, you know, skipped to if, they, if you don't care about the rest of the questions and let's just get into this. We got some questions coming here off of our discord server. Um, first one coming in from sock. He says, considering the switch price drop, do we see Nintendo selects soon? Um, I, I, I kind of have mind that, you know, I know there's rumors out there about Nintendo selects. I do think we might see Nintendo selects by the end of the year. Uh, but that's, you know, going to be really up to Nintendo. Of course, uh, we might not see Nintendo selects till 2023. Uh, for those who don't know what Nintendo selects are, they're basically $20 cheap versions of classic games from Nintendo, uh, for their current platform. We hate, we have them on 3DS. We have them on, uh, Wii U. We have them on Wii. Uh, we have them on DS. So yeah, it, they're probably coming at some point here. You know, we are in the midst of year six, so it kind of feels like we're, we're due. Um, light uh, light ace says how much for first party game price drop how much discount from original pricing uh that's where you're that, that that's the nintendo selects you're gonna see 40 dollar uh price drops and all that so that that's that's more in line with what you're probably looking to get at this exact moment is that $40 drop. All right, now that does it for questions from uh, Discord. Obviously, those were related questions, so we kept them as one topic. Let's get into our questions off of our last Prime Answers YouTube video, and this one comes from Neoflight23. Got a Prime question for you, Nate. With the recent talk of former developers of the Star Wars Rogue Squadron trilogy and Aspire Games telling people they'll remake the Rogue Squadron trilogy if there is enough demand... Do you think that the odds are long or short that we'll see this trilogy remastered by Aspire Games and re-released at least for the Nintendo Switch in the next 18 months? Thanks for taking the time to read this, and until next time, I am out. Uh, so there's more to it than that. So when when, <laughs> when Aspire Games talks about how you know the, the, they'll be willing to remake uh, the, the Squadron trilogy, it's not entirely up to them. Uh, they don't actually own the copyright. Disney does. It's a Star Wars property. They don't own it. So it's not actually up to them. It's up to Disney to decide that they want these games to come back. Uh, now, we have seen other classic uh, Star Wars games come back. So we know Disney is not opposed to bringing back classic Star Wars video games. So, yes, it is possible and i do think there is actually quite a bit of demand i think a lot of people would like to see these games remastered or remade uh to fit with modern times because you know squadrons was really cool from ea but it wasn't an exact replacement for what the rogue squadron trilogy was right like i, I want to be clear here squadrons is a good game it's just not rogue squadron right which i don't think it was trying to be rogue squadron nor should it have been i, I don't think anything can really be 
what Rogue Squadron used to be. So uh, I do think that uh, it's possible. Now, in the next 18 months, no. Uh, I, I think this is something that's going to take a, a few years. But uh, if it's just releasing the old games, if that's all it's about is just bringing them back in a classic way, sure. I, I don't think that that's going to happen either. But, hey, you know what? Um, I don't work for Aspire and I don't work for Disney, so I'm not part of the decision-making process on this. Flip a coin. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, Sinim says, how do you see Nintendo Switch Online in the very long term? Very long term. Do you think it'll pass on to the next generation of consoles? Do you think it'll evolve with the hardware? Like, for example, offer in-game or system-level voice chat. Maybe some kind of rebranding, simply Nintendo Online. Uh, how about pricing and the account it has to offer? So many questions, I know. Keep up the great work. Uh, it is interesting because Nintendo has basically changed their online system with every generation, right? Wii was different than Wii U, which was different than Switch. DS different than 3DS, different than Switch. Uh, so it, it's been very curious watching how Nintendo evolves this uh, online system. Uh, remember, they got rid of friend codes and they brought friend codes back because for some reason they thought that was a good idea. Uh, and calling it specifically NSO, Nintendo Switch Online, is, is really interesting because... Calling it NSO kind of infers it could be a single generation system, but then Nintendo says with Nintendo accounts, which they do call them Nintendo accounts because they plan for these accounts to be around for a while, uh, but Nintendo Switch Online is very much Nintendo Switch oriented, not Nintendo account oriented, even though you can't have a Nintendo Switch Online account without a Nintendo account. So. I think that it is an interesting prospect thinking about what the long-term solution is for this. Will NSO be brought over to the next platform? And I think one thing to consider is, will Nintendo do away with the Switch branding? See, when Wii U came out, it was probably time to move on from the Wii branding. But part of that's because the Wii died out and thus the popularity of the branding died out. The Switch branding is as healthy as it's ever been today. It is still the number one selling platform in most of the world month over month over month. It's a household brand. And what Nintendo should do at this point is not abandon that Switch branding. And the next generation uh, platform should still probably use Switch in it, it whether they call it Switch 2. Uh, I really hope they don't go with the new branding with new Nintendo Switch. We know they did that, uh, you know, with, with prior systems or mid-gen upgrades. But if they keep the Switch branding, then NSO could literally carry over. I know you could talk about rebranding it to just Nintendo Online. Uh, I, I don't know they're going to do that. I think Nintendo looked at the branding of this as, look, what, what does Microsoft call it? Xbox Live or Xbox Game Pass. Why? Because they have a consistent branding around their platforms. Xbox, PlayStation Network. You have a consistent branding around the PlayStation Network, and that is PlayStation, right? Every generation of system is called PlayStation. I'm really hopeful that NSO actually hints that, hey, every generation, at least for a while, is going to use that Switch branding. That's what I hope. So then, in that case, I hope that NSO is just brought over to the next generation. None of us know. If you actually just look at the history of Nintendo, you could just say, hell no. This is a one-and-done solution. Uh, but I, I sincerely hope that's not the case, and New Age Nintendo, under a new president, sees that they can't just make NSO with tens of millions of subscribers, this like one-off shoot that gets rebooted with the next generation. I, that, I think that's a big mistake Nintendo's done, and I hope they don't continue to do that. You, people like to see continuity from platform to platform. They, they don't want to have to start all over again every single time. Now, that being said, will they expand it in the future and add new features? Uh, you mentioned, you know, like local voice chat and stuff like this. I think that is something to look into. Uh, while they are doing some minor updates to the phone app, uh, all these updates might make it look prettier, but it doesn't actually add any functionality. And I think that's what's key in when you're looking at these updates and they're just cosmetic. Yeah. We're not getting new features. We're not getting more games supported in it, despite the fact that Nintendo has a bunch of multiplayer games just from themselves. I mean, why isn't ARMS part of this? Why isn't Smash part of this? Why can't we talk to friends while we're playing Smash? Like, like this is just... Nintendo is not forward-thinking with the app. And I think the fact that we aren't getting new features and new games added to the app is a pretty good sign, in my honest opinion, although Splatoon 3 will probably be part of the app, right? That local voice chat is something they are going to consider in the future. Obviously, uh, we've had people talk in the past how 
Nintendo's biggest concern with, with, with local voice chat is probably uh, things like not even so much the shit talking that can happen from like 12 year olds because we, we've all experienced that at some point in our lives playing online games. Uh, but maybe some of the, the uh, child predators that can exist out there in online communities on PlayStation and Xbox um, going after children and, and, and stuff like that. So uh, Nintendo obviously is, is worried about that with having this fully opened um, system. I do think that, you know, parental controls can go a long way to stave a lot of that, which by the way, the parental controls exist on the other platforms. Parents just aren't using them because for some reason, parents don't want to monitor what the hell their kids are doing. Cause they feel like I can't tell my kid what to do. Yes. You damn well can. Is your kid old enough to cook their own dinner, provide their own money to pay their own bills? Then no, you are still the provider. And so you got to make the rules. You got to put your foot down Use those parental controls and prevent certain online interactions as much as possible. It just it is what you need to do to protect your kids. This is this is about more than just yourself. When your kids are eighteen or whatever, at least in my country, if they want to go make those bad choices on their own and whatever, that's on them. But until then, it's my job to help protect my kids and raise them right. So no, my kids aren't allowed to do certain online interactions either. So um, I do think that uh, Nintendo is deeply concerned about stuff like that. But Nintendo is also the company that's had local voice chat before, both on the 3DS and even the Wii. So they're not adverse to doing local voice chat. And they still allow other companies to do local voice chat on Switch. So I think it's just an inevitability that Nintendo will add it. Just don't expect it anytime soon. Uh, Paul Gale Network says, fun questions and answers, Nate. Here's a question. If you could hang out with and collaborate on a project with any living person today, who would it be? It could be from the video game industry, movie biz, etc. I mean, wouldn't it be anybody? Can't, can't it literally just be anybody? And the bonus, if you were to make something together, what would you want to create? Um... No, that's a, that's very interesting because like it, it's easy to default to like I I would like to collaborate on a project, um, you know, with, with say Ag Nomu and, and and get a a, a Ao Nomu or whatever I can't I can't pronounce his last name or shit. Anyways, uh, I I would like to work with him say on a Zelda game, uh, connecting him directly with the fan base, um, or work with Shigeru Miyamoto on, on the next big Nintendo project, or work with. Um, you know, so, some something like that, right? Like that, that's an easy answer to put put out there for a Nintendo channel because um, that would be clear and obvious. But I enjoy creating content on YouTube, so uh, I, I always look towards something that that can both benefit others and um, benefit the channel, and 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 obviously just be a hell of a lot of fun to create content around. So to me, I probably would like to collaborate with and. Oh no, maybe this isn't an original thought. Uh, Mr. Beast and his team. And the reason I, I, I want to collaborate with them is more so for their charitable efforts than anything else. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Jimmy and his team uh, and how much charity work they drive and how much charity they do themselves. Uh, for those who don't know, yeah, he's got Mr. Beast Burger all over the place. He also has food banks all over the place that he provides 100% of all the food to to help the homeless. Um, he's very, very charitable. You, you, you might see him in those poker live streams and, and all, but he is very, very charitable. Um, and I would like to collaborate with him on some sort of video idea, some sort of video concept, um, that, that, that could take maybe the Mr. Beast style, uh, video and apply it to Nintendo in some way. Maybe, maybe it's a, um, a American Ninja Warrior style, um, you know, uh, Mario, uh, level run or something, right? That 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 we all go through with different prizes at, at different points or something, uh, with a bunch of other Nintendo content creators, right? That, that I, I think that would be that would be really cool, really unique, and a fun idea that you know we can make content out of on our channel out of, and he can make content obviously for his channel, um, and obviously have the end goal of maybe um, raising awareness of of, of something, um, be, be it some form of cancer that 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 people deal with or children's hospital stuff. Uh, or problems that are specific to the gaming community, like like gamers with disabilities, uh, you know, like I, I would I would like to see some sort of um, charity drive driven from it um, to to raise you know a few million dollars to to help some sort of cause. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually more interested in the charity aspect than anything. And obviously, 
from a selfish standpoint as a content creator, obviously Mr. Beast is basically the biggest creator on the platform um, and, and would obviously be a big boost for the channel. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I really enjoy creating content and something like that sounds like a lot of fun. My knee be damned. I will run that damn uh, Mario Ninja Warrior course. No problem. I will run that course like a champ. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think it would be a lot of fun, but uh, I, I don't know that Jimmy will ever <laughs> work with me at a video in, at, at any point in my life. But, hey, it's fun to dream, right? Um, uh, Astry Boy says, here's a thought. What if Nintendo would just go back to a solo home console and handheld only unit and not doing another Switch hybrid? I can see Nintendo uh, would do that scene uh, that they're well Nintendo. Uh, so you're basically saying, hey, Nintendo will, will go back to home console and handle it because, hey, they're just Nintendo and Nintendo does Nintendo things. That's basically your explanation, Atari Boy. And I don't blame you because we have no idea what Nintendo is going to do. They could go back to a home console and handle it. I think it's very difficult to do that at this point because uh, the president has talked in even the recent Q&A um, how the fact that this is a system that does both has actually really unified Nintendo's development and made it much easier to get content out. And they're reaping the benefits of consistent content. We're in the midst of year six and year six is almost as packed as year one, as packed as year three. Like Nintendo is seeing amazing results because they have all of their development focused on a single platform. And I think Nintendo, because they're reaping the sales benefit, both hardware and software wise, has caught on to something here that they're not going to let go of. I think we're getting a hybrid again and and I think Nintendo's going to ride the hybrid the hybrid uh, route all the way until it can't be ridden anymore. And I don't know what the end goal is if it can't be ridden anymore. It might be able to be ridden for a long time. Look at phones. Look at smartphones. Look at the iPhone, right? Like, how long have we been riding the whole smartphone wave since 2007? It's been, what, 15 years? And we're still riding that wave without any major... Um, you know, innovations. We can talk about the cameras. And yeah, there's there's been innovations. But for the most part, we're still touching the screen to play with apps and make phone calls and text messages, right? We haven't really evolved beyond that. And I don't know that we're going to for a long time. And I feel like that could be happening here with the this whole uh, hybrid system as well. There's so much more that can be done that I think it's in a good place to keep it going as is. And sorry about that. We had a little... A little camera out. It's just one thing that sucks about my camera. I get I get ten minutes and then it goes out and I got this little tiny red dot that I have to see that's like ten feet away. That's almost impossible for me to see. Uh, anyways, uh, we have let's see. I think uh, maybe a couple more questions. This one comes from T Firmback. He says, "What do you think is the next big Mario game going to be? Odyssey two? Or are we getting something completely new? I think it's been so long since Mario Odyssey. We're getting something completely new." Uh, I think Nintendo could have done a quick turnaround Super Mario Odyssey 2. They didn't because of the quick turnaround of Mario Galaxy 2. Mario Galaxy 2 ended up not selling that well for Nintendo. Uh, so I think they view this as, hey, we, we can't do this. We, 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 we need to do something fresh, something new. Uh, and that's why it's taken so long. So that's just my thoughts on that. Breadman asks, have I ever played the Horizon series? And if so, what do you think? Uh, Horizon uh, Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, I have not played Forbidden West. I have played Zero Dawn. I think it's really, really good. Uh, there's only one thing in the game that bothers me. Uh, to be honest, I, I actually think the games are very, very competitive with something like Breath of the Wild uh, or other open world action games. Like uh, They're a lot more story driven than, say, Breath of the Wild. Uh, but they're, and they don't obviously use the same physics engine, but the battles are really epic. The games are really beautiful. The story is really well told. I think Alloy. Uh, the main character is is, is phenomenal. Uh, I I like everything about about the first game that I played. Uh, the the only gripe I have, and this is just a stupid nitpicky gripe, is clipping through foliage. And this is dumb. We've been clipping through things in games since I can remember back to the nest days. We've been clipping all the time. And as games got more and more graphics graphically intense, we clip, we clip, we clip. Zelda games we've been clipping forever. But for some reason. In Breath of the Wild, I don't notice the clipping. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. I think I've seen some cl like sword clipping through some clothing. and stuff. So, like, clipping occurs. But it feels like clipping occurs less with foliage uh, than it does with anything else because all the foliage interacts with Link. 
uh, whereas all the foliage in Horizon doesn't interact with alloy. Only certain foliage that has an intended use. So if you're going into that really, really tall, like red grass or whatever, that um, you can do like a little sneak in, like, okay, yeah, that grass serves a purpose for stealth, so it interacts with the character. But other foliage that doesn't serve any other purpose in the world other than to just make it look prettier, you just clip right through it like it doesn't exist. I mean, you won't clip through necessarily like a tree trunk, but you'll clip through bushes and flowers and everything else like they're not even there. Uh, and, and look, this isn't me trying to knock the game for it. I told you this is incredibly nitpicky. Uh, but I don't know, man. Something about Breath of the Wild ever since then has made me notice it a lot more. Uh, and I'm not really sure what it is. Something about Breath of the Wild has made me notice it more in other games, even though I'm well aware that all games have been this way forever. You clip through tons of stuff in Assassin's Creed, never complained about it then, but I also was playing all those games before uh, I played Breath of the Wild. Since Breath of the Wild, it's been kind of like, man, why am I noticing this so much more? Uh, maybe it's just because of the incredible physics engine of Breath of the Wild, but um, yeah, it, setting that nitpick aside, uh, very fun games. Uh, I, I really don't have much complaint about that first one anyways. I can't talk about Forbidden West. I haven't played it, but, um, yeah, I, I think Sony's onto something and I think Horizon's basically their Zelda and, uh, it's a good one. And I see it lasting for many, many, many years to come. Uh, Panda Production Studio says, what are your current thoughts on Sonic Frontiers? Well, we don't know a whole lot. Uh, I think it's promising. I think every Sonic game that gets revealed though, it looks promising. Uh, we've been excited for many Sonic games before, and then they ended up turning out sometimes at best just okay, uh, sometimes at worst really bad. So my thought process with Sonic Frontiers is I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm hyping responsibly. I think it could be amazing, but history tells you to not allow yourself to get so hyped to think it will be. And then just be surprised if it is. So that's where I'm sitting right now with Sonic Frontiers. I like what they're saying. I like what they've shown. But I need to play it. Because it's often been fool's gold in the past. I want to believe it's not this time. But my lord. We, we have been let down too many times by Sonic over the years. Uh, we've gotten some good ones. Sonic Mania, sure. But again, it's built on classic formula. What about New Age? We've gotten okay ones. I thought Sonic Lost World was probably the best one they've done yet. Uh, and even them wasn't perfect. So we need to sit here and wait till we can actually at least play a demo of the game, if nothing else, right? Like, I I don't know. I, I feel like with Sonic, it's always, let's just wait until we can play it before we can really be hyped, right? And that's going to do it here for Prime Answer. So thank you so much for tuning in. I had a really good time making this video. I hope you guys did too. The Prime Answers takes quite a bit of, of, of time to put together. It's one of my longer videos I make. Obviously, we got to bring in all the questions. and i got to make clips of all of them. and it, it, It's just a, a little bit tedious and time-consuming. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily get you know oodles and oodles of viewership to justify it. You know, it's not like, oh, my God, this video is going to make like 50 bucks. Yeah, it, makes, it, it makes like maybe 5 or 5 or $6. But uh, I don't do it for the money. I do these videos. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not going to turn ads, but I do these videos for you guys. This is all about me interacting with my community, and it's one of my favorite things to do as a YouTuber. Uh, so keep those questions coming. Fill it up. I would love if a day comes that there's so many questions, I can't even fit them in one video, and I actually have to pick and choose because um, that's when I know that my community is super active and super vibrant. Uh, so I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll catch you guys in Prime Answers again one week from today. Also, go Bucks, baby. Game 7. I have no idea if they're going to win. I <laughs> I think the cards are stacked against them, but you know what? The cards have been stacked against them for two years, and they just kept winning, so I guess we'll see what happens.